want to get the elephant out of the room. No, I do not support Donald Trump. I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, and the Word of God says that we're not to entangle ourselves in the affairs of this life. So, I just want to get that elephant out of the room. Typically, when we go off to places and preach, because of my skin color, I'm automatically assumed to be a Donald Trump supporter. But see, the Word of God, the Word of God says we're not to choose evil. And some will say, well, it's the lesser of two evils, right? Well, I don't choose evil. Donald Trump is not a born-again Christian. He never he said that I don't need to repent. What do I need to repent for? I'm a good person. I don't have to ask God for forgiveness because I don't I don't do anything wrong. And so so I just want to get that elephant, you know, I want to get that out of the way right now. We are not Donald Trump supporters. So if anybody wants to try to come up to us and tell us we're Donald Trump supporters, I am not a Donald Trump supporter. Just want to get that out of the way right now. With that being said, just want to give you a little sermon from the Word of God. Hallelujah. I want to go to Romans chapter 3, verse 4. I didn't even say anything. I'm just reading the Word of God, ma'am. And no, I'm not going to hell. Lord, rebuke that. The Word of God says, hallelujah. Let God be true, but every man a liar. Let God be true, LGBT, let God be true and every man a liar. Now we live in a world today where the truth of God's word is being corrupted. We live in a world today where people are taking the truth of God's word and trying to change it. So I'm here today to preach on the love of God. God hates assholes, just say it. Okay, well I don't know where that's in the Bible, but... I know the word of God says God hates pride. It does say that. It says God hates pride. But anyways, the word of God says, let God be true and every man a liar. We live in a world today where they're trying to, the world is trying to redefine who God is, what God is. They're trying to redefine the love of God and what the love of God is. But see, when you make God out to be a liar and you try to twist and change and contort God's word, you're actually preaching and teaching another God. So in the book of Romans chapter 1, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from against heaven, uh, from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who, who is blessed forever. forever. Amen. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the, of the woman, burned in their lusts one towards another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. To do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents.
without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. The Word of God says there in the book of Romans that they change the truth of God into a lie. But we know in the Word of God, God is what they call immutable. It's one of God's attributes. The immutability of God means He's never changing. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in the beginning, God created them male and female. But we see in 2015, Barack Obama took it upon himself with the Supreme Court to legalize same-sex marriage across the entire United States. But guess what, friends? Guess what, friends? They can sign all the legislation they want. It never trumps God's law. It never trumps God's law. God is the one who created the institution of marriage. God created the institution of marriage. Man can't change what God created. They can change it according to their own carnal desires. But God created marriage, not man. And God said, from the beginning, they were male and female. A few years ago, you had Joan Rivers. They asked Joan Rivers, hey, are we going to have a gay president? And Joan Rivers said, we already have a gay president. And they're like, what are you talking about? She's like, everybody knows that Michelle Obama is a tranny. No, we're still preaching this. No, I don't got to go to America. I'm in America. We ain't got to go to America. I can preach the word of God. You going to run us off? So Joan Rivers said, everybody knows that Michelle Obama is a tranny. And not only two months later, she wound up dead. Only two months after she said that, she wound up dead. Why am I up here talking about that? Because this world and the beast system that we are living in are redefining God's words. And many people who call themselves Christians support this wicked abomination. They support this abomination. This abomination. What about Trump? I am not a Trump supporter. I already got that cleared up. That was the first. No, 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 no. I already talked about that when I came up here. You're for the devil, Salim, please. You're for, no, I'm I'm going to talk about Michelle, and I'm going to talk about the false, lukewarm Christians who support that abomination. Yes, Michelle Obama is a man. We're going to get that out of the way right now. Michelle Obama is a man. She is a tranny. It's very well known and very well documented that Barack Obama was a practicing homosexual. His nickname in the Chicago area was Bath. Hold up. His, his nickname in the Chicago area was Bath House. Bath House Barry. Bath House Barry. They're gonna go to hell. Barack Obama's nickname in the Chicago area. Bath House Barry. We know why is that? Because he was going to the bath houses and commit homosexual sodomite acts with other men. It's very well known. Why do you think he's the president who signed same-sex marriage into law? sex. Michelle Obama is a man. We're going to get that out of the way right now. If you want to debate me on that, Joan Rivers wouldn't have wound up dead two months later after saying that. And I'm not saying Joan Rivers is a saint. She was wicked too and she needed to repent and be born again. Unfortunately, she probably died in her sin. So my point is, my point is, we're to let God be true and every man a liar. See, people like Barack Obama and this beast system, they're taking the truth of God's word and they're turning it into a lie. They're trying to redefine what marriage is. Marriage is between one man and one woman. It's God's institution. God created that institution. God created the institution of marriage. God created the institution of a family. God created the institution of a church. God created the institution of a government. Preach it, man. But see, we live in a world system today where they try to take everything that God did, the Word of God says, that they take good and make it evil, and evil for good. Now, I'm going to read it right now, Isaiah 5 and 20, as a matter of fact, glory to God. Flipped right there, all glory to God. It says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. 
That's right. And that's what's going on in this world today. Everything that God has said, they're trying to flip the script. And the problem is, is you have professing, I don't know if they're really Christians or not, but you have professing Christians who are supporting this. They support the Obamas. They support the same-sex marriage and the same-sex legislation. But see, God is immutable. God doesn't change. He said, from the beginning, God created them male and female. That doesn't change. Come on. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. He is the same forever. He doesn't change. He's immutable. It's the immutability of God. That is one of his attributes. We always hear when we go out and preach, why aren't you preaching the love? Why aren't you preaching God's love? I am preaching God's love. When you preach the truth, that is preaching the love. When you preach a lie, you're preaching hate. Amen. When you tell homosexuals that you can continue off in your gay pride and your gay sex and you can get you can get married, you actually hate them. You don't love them because you don't tell them the truth. Yeah. And there's all these so-called Christian churches. All these so-called Christian churches who pander to this. They pander to it. They're selling out. They're giving, they're giving into the peace system. Same-sex marriage and, and homosexuality, that's all part of the peace system. You're going to have to accept it. That's why you have all these major companies. All these major companies are backing same-sex. That's why you have Converse. Converse recently endorsed an 11-year-old drag boy named Desmond is Amazing. All these major companies are selling out. But it already told us this in the Word of God in the book of Revelation in chapter 13. It says in the book of Revelation in chapter 13 that unless you have the mark of the beast, you will not be able to buy or sell. So eventually, 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 if you're not giving in, if you're not pandering and catering to the peace system, if you're not going along with the agenda, then you are going to have to either lose your head or give in. Those are your choices, it says in the Word of God. It says that those that don't take the mark of the beast, those that don't bow down and worship the beast, if they worship Christ and stick with Christ and the truth of God's Word, they will lose their head. Are you ready to lose your head? I'm pretty sure most professing Christians aren't ready to lose their head. They're going to go along to get along. They're going to go along with the beast system. They're going to accept sodomy as the law of the land. But it's not God's laws. See, man can never trump God's laws. Man changes like it says in the Word of God. Man is a liar, but God is not a liar. God never changes. God's not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And this is why if you call yourself a Christian, we need to be anchored to Christ Jesus. Jesus. The Word of God says in Hebrews 6 and 19 that, that hope, it is an anchor for our soul. We are anchored to Christ Jesus when we're born again. And you think about an anchor. An anchor, when it's when it's anchored to the, to the bottom of the water, or it's anchored to a, a, a piece of land, or whatever the case may be, it's immovable. It doesn't move. It's not tossed to and fro by the waves and the winds. And that's how we're to be as Christians. We're not to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. If you call yourself a Christian, because I'm pretty sure at least 50% of you out here would profess to be a Christian. Would profess. I would say profess. That doesn't mean you are, though. Because Jesus said, many will profess to me in that day. Lord, Lord, did we not do many wonderful works in your name? Did we not cast out devils? Did we not perform miracles? Did we not prophesy your name? And Jesus will say to them, hey, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. But see, God's not willing that any should perish. God is extremely long-suffering that all would come to repentance if they would only repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. But there has to be a genuine brokenness. A person must repent. They must have a change of mind and a change of heart about their sin and their sin condition, about being a sinner, and they turn to God and they put their faith in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But see, once again, this isn't happening because people aren't anchored to Christ. They're not anchored. And, and, and what is that anchor? That anchor is the gospel. It is the four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That is the gospel. It is the breadth. It is the length. It is the depth. And it is the height. And we're to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, friends. And when you love the things of the world, you don't love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You don't. When you go along to get along, when you go along with the peace system, you don't love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You're double-minded. The Word of God says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Friends, a double-minded man is driven. He's driven by the winds. He's driven by the waves. Tossed to and fro over 
over here, over there, never settled, never immovable. But guess who is immovable? God. God is immovable. And when we let Christ dwell in our hearts, when we let Christ dwell in our heart, we too will be immovable. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. But Christ must dwell in us. He is the hope of glory. Hallelujah. It's the anchor for our soul, friends. Are you anchored to Christ Jesus? Or are you anchored to the things of this world? Because God says in His Word, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, it is of the world, it is not of the Father, friends. It is not of the Father. So let God be true. Let God be true. God is immutable. God is immovable. And that's how we're to be. The Word of God says that a wise man, he buildeth his house on the solid rock. And that solid rock is Christ. We are to be anchored to Him. We are to have that foundation on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. And when the storms come and the winds blow and they beat on that house, they beat against it, that house doesn't fall because it's on the solid rock. It's on the foundation of Jesus Christ, my friends. But when you build your house on sand, on sinking sand, those storms come, those waves come, the rain beats against that house. And because it's not built on solid ground, it's not built on immovable ground, it's not built with a solid foundation, but rather on sand, that house will fall, and it will be a great fall, it says in the Word of God. I have a really good idea. I have a really good idea. I'm going to keep preaching. Hallelujah. And see, and what's, what's great is, is, is there's four different Gospels. Not that four different preaching. The Word of God says there's four different Gospels. There's four different Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. There's four different Gospels. And each Gospel brings its own uniqueness to the fullness, to the breadth, to the length, to the depth and the height of Jesus Christ. And in the book of Luke, when he's talking about the house that's built on the solid ground, Luke says that the wise man, he digs deep. He digs deep and lays that foundation. And that's what we must do. If you call yourself a professing, professing Christian, we must dig deep. We must get that stoniness out of our heart. See, the Word of God says, in the parable of the sower, there's four different grounds, which is a symbolic of four different hearts. And that second heart, the second heart is the stony ground, and it represents a stony, a hardened heart. So when the Word of God, when that seed is planted on that ground, because of the stone, because of the rock, when that seed is planted, it, for, it, it only lasts for a little bit, friends. It only lasts for a little bit because there's no ground, there's no depthness of the earth. It can't, that seed can't get deep down in the heart and germinate and, and, and grow and, and have those roots spread deep. The Word of God says that we are to be like trees planted by the rivers of the uh, 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 rivers of uh, living river, living river, ah, I can't even say it. Little living little waters, little waters little hallelujah. <laughs> rivers of living water. Thank you, ma'am. God bless you. And that's how we're to be as a tree. When a tree is planted and those roots are deep, that tree, when the winds come, we've seen, on, we've all seen trees blow in the wind. Well, when that tree is planted and those roots are deep in the ground, that tree doesn't come up easily. But when it's a, when it's a small tree or when it's, when it's only planted a few inches in the ground, those winds come and it'll swoop that tree right out of the ground. And why is that? Because it's not planted rooted, or it's not uh, planted and rooted deep. And that's how we must be in Christ Jesus. So that way, when the different winds of doctrine come, when, when, when the things of the world come, and they're, they're contrary to the Word of God, we will see it right away. We will have the spiritual eyes and the spiritual discernment to see this is not of God. But if we're not planted and rooted deep in Christ Jesus, if He is not our solid rock foundation, when the, when the different contrary winds come, we will be tossed to and fro, and we will believe that and go for that which is not a God. And we will go along to get along, like this banner shows. We will accept pride. Well, the Word of God says that God hates the proud. He says that in the day when Jesus Christ returns, the proud will be made stubble. But see, once again, God, he's being long-suffering. It says in, sorry, man, it says in 2 Peter 3 and 9, that God, he's long-suffering to us who are not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 
What is repentance, friends? It's when you have a change of mind and a change of heart about being a sinner and about your sin condition. And you turn to God. And you put your faith and trust and hope and confidence in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You know, there's a, there's a famous hymn I'm sure most people here are aware of. It's called, In Christ Alone. In Christ Alone, friends. It's only through and by Him. Not these things of the world, friends. Not the things of the world. Because the things of the world will perish, friends. It will all perish. But the Word of God, it will remain true forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. It remains true. The Word of God is unchangeable. Man will try to change it. Man tries to corrupt the Scriptures. But guess what? God has preserved His Word for all generations, friends. And His Word is, was true 2,000 years ago, and His Word is still true today. God hasn't changed. God hasn't changed His mind on homosexuality. God hasn't changed His mind on transgenderism, or men, men wearing the attire of women, as it says in the Word of God. The Word of God says that when a man wears that which pertaineth to a woman, it is an abomination. An abomination, biblically defined, is something God hates. Something God detests. So when we had this this so-called woman in here, Michael, I remember, I remember, I remember several years ago, Obama said, Michael and I. Now some could say it was a Freudian slip, but here's here's what's awesome about our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior will allow people to confound themselves and say things out of their mouth that they probably shouldn't have said, but they said it anyway. There was a preacher back in the day named Robert Tilton. He was on television soliciting people for money. He was a prosperity pimp. And while this man, while this man was soliciting funds on television, he said, Satan gave me this message. He, he, he said he meant to say God gave him this message, but he actually said Satan gave him the message. So the same thing with Obama. When Obama said, Michael and I, yes, he was referring to Michelle. But see, once again, we have a woman, or a man, I mean, wearing that which pertaineth to a woman. Yes, Michelle is a tranny. I'm just putting it out there. Michelle is a tranny. I know they laugh, but it's true. It's true. It's very, she's a tranny, a transgender. She is. He is, I mean, I'm sorry, he is. Who is? Obama too? I don't know, I don't know if he is. I know he's a sodomite, I know that much. That's why they used to call him in Chicago, Bathhouse Barry. Larry Sinclair, Larry Sinclair and several other men were murdered, were murdered when they started speaking out about their sodomite, sodomite affairs with Obama. But, you know, why do you think, why do you think Obama, he was a professing Christian, right? All the Christians were lining up, yeah, Obama, Obama. And why do you think he was so hard on wanting to legalize gay marriage? Because he himself is gay. That's why. That's why. Now you can go to puke that in Jesus' name. I'm not a fool. I don't accept that and I don't I don't take that. You don't like the truth. The word of God says, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? They don't want to hear these things. Religious but free, you, free. Hey, you're on hey, hey, Michelle and I'm in Barack are religious. Barack is a practicing Muslim. When he swore in, he swore in on a Quran. He didn't swear in on a Bible. He put his hand on a Quran. That's right. Why do you think he defends Muslims? Why do you think when the Sri Lanka bombings happened, when the Sri Lanka bombings happened, he didn't call the people that were killed Christians. He called them Eastern, Eastern worshippers. But he didn't call them Christians. But when the New Zealand attack happened, Obama said, oh, you know, we love the Muslim community. We support the Muslim community. But he couldn't say nothing about the Christian community. Christians, true born-again Christians, the most persecuted faith in the world. That's right, friends. Christians are the most persecuted faith in the world. You don't see it like that in America. But best believe it's coming. We're living in modern-day Babylon. You can read about it, Revelation 17 and 18, if you call yourself a Christian. Pick up your Bible. Quit, quit taking what your, what your so-called pastor feeds you every Sunday and pick that Bible up yourself and read these things for yourself and pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you. 
Because best believe the Holy Spirit would never guide you to support Michelle Obama, or Michael Obama, whatever you want to call it. Yes, I said it. Because these things need to be exposed. These, this truth needs to go out there. Because best believe Jamal Bryant's not going to tell you these things. You need to go somewhere else. Best believe Creflo Dollar's not going to tell you these things. Best believe Dale Blower's not going to tell you these things. Best believe that. Best believe E. Dewey Smith's not going to tell you these things. Best believe O.C. Allen's not going to tell you these things. That's right. Best believe T.D. Snakes ain't going to tell you these things. Best believe John Gray's not going to tell you these things. No. But a real man of God who has no problem standing up for the truth of God's word. That's why the word of God says, the real LGBT. Let God be true. Okay. Romans 3, 4. Let God be true and every man a liar. Come on, bro. And once again, it says in Romans 1 that they take the truth of God's word and they turn it into a lie because they love not the truth. Come on, bro. The truth does not abide in them. The truth does not abide in them. If the truth abided in them, they would come out here and lift up their voice like a trumpet. If the truth abided in them, they would show you the gospel. They would show you the truth according to Jesus Christ. They will show you that when you're born again, when you're a new creation in Christ Jesus, you, you, you have a new nature. That means the things that you once used to do, you no longer want to do. Me, for instance, before I was born again, I used to fornicate. I used to listen to wicked, filthy music. I used to, I used to drink. I used to get high. I used to sell drugs. I used to grow weed, I used to grow mushrooms, I used to do all of that. I used to be addicted to pornography, I used to do all of that, friends. But when I became born again by the blood of Jesus Christ, all of that washed away and I became new. Amen. I became new in Christ Jesus. See, those old things would pass away. It's not, they might, no. It says, all things, old things pass away, behold. All things become new in Christ Jesus. We're made a new creation. But see, this isn't preached. This isn't preached at your Jamal Bryant's. This ain't preached, this ain't preached by your Dale Bronner's. This ain't preached by your Dewey Smith's. No, they preach, they preach that carnal message. They preach that you're oppressed. You're oppressed by the white man message. No, guess what? I'm here to set you free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ can set you free. Only Christ can set you free. Jamal Bryant can't set you free. Dale Bronner can't set you free. Dewey Smith, Creflo, TD Snakes, they can't set you free. But Jesus and Jesus Christ only can set you free. Make you free, it says in the word of God. Hallelujah. And it says, who the son of man makes free is free indeed. See, most, unfortunately, they have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And what God says, from such turn away. We are to turn away from those that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And what is that power, friends? That power is to overcome and have victory, a conquering victory over our sin. Jesus Christ gave born again by the believing Christians the power Jesus, to stop our scorpion. Drink. Oh, really? <laughs> They didn't have electricity back then, ma'am. He would not have used the microphone. He would not have. Oh. How do you know that? 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 Because his word carries his voice. Okay. Look at that devil. Look at that devil in her. See that devil in her eyes? That's a woman who's got a legion of demons in her. You can laugh. But guess what? When you have the Holy Spirit, you can see these things. But I get it. I get it. The Word of God says, let me go there. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians in chapter 4. Hallelujah. It says... But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world, being Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ crucified, friends. I'm not here to preach me. I'm not here to preach religion. I'm not here to preach a denomination. I'm not here to preach a church. I'm here to preach Christ and Christ crucified. That when you come to the cross, when you come to that cross, a broken, contrite sinner, and you say, Father God, have mercy on me, a sinner. He is quick 
and just to forgive you. It's through the resurrection power, friends, that he will take that old man, he will crucify that old man, and he will resurrect the new man. That's what Christ does, friends. That's what he wants to do for you. But the problem is most don't repent. 